I want to go over some of the techniques that I'll be using to machine titanium and uh, hopefully cut out this AR lower. My X3 mill is anything but rigid and so in order to uh, account for that lack of rigidity I am going to try and use as much uh, high-speed machining techniques as I can. Now it's not really high-speed machining uh, given my small uh, slow machine uh, so I prefer to think of it as low torque machining but the same principles apply and those principles are keeping a, a small tool engagement angle uh, on the tool at all times and what that does is it reduces the torque required to move the tool. So as you can see what I've got here is uh, the profile of my AR lower that I'm going to be cutting out and in CAMBAM I have drawn a spiral tool path that uh, goes around the edge of the lower. This tool path advances uh, 0.02 inches between each spiral and that is 8% of the cutter diameter. I used that number from the uh, Sandvik Cormont series of web videos. Uh, they suggest for slots that are less than two times the cutter diameter to use 8% as a maximum, so that's what I've done. And as you can see, as the tool moves around, the uh, edge of the profile uh, comes through. Now, I've left a little bit left over for a finishing pass here, but those spirals will result in a slot uh, around the AR lower, and I've got these that go all the way around. So that's the technique uh, for at least the profile. And the way that I'm determining how fast uh, my cutter should cut as it makes these spiral tool paths is to use G-Wizard. Now G-Wizard is really a wonderful thing and it's the reason that I've been successful so far. It's remarkable to me that on my very first cut in titanium uh, I didn't break any tools. Uh, the cuts came out looking good and all on a very small machine. I don't think that would have been possible without a tool like G-Wizard. And the reason that it's wonderful is it takes into account so many different factors that you really just can't do by hand or by ear or by eye. And so I've got the uh, specifics of my cut loaded up into G-Wizard. Uh, quarter inch tool diameter, four flutes, maximum stick out of 0.85 inches. And what I've told it is that I want to take these 0 0.02 inch uh, per cut maximum and I want to do a cut depth of a quarter inch. And it has told me that I need to run at about five inches per minute. Now, if, if you'll notice from the last video, I was going up to 20 inches per minute. And the reason for that is a thing called chip thing. And if you go to Bob Warfield, he's the creator of G-Wizard website, uh, he's got a great uh, blog post on high-speed machining and he describes radial chip thinning. Essentially the idea is that with shallower cuts your chips also become shallower and you should account for that when you're making your cut. You can't do that by hand. Uh, at least you can't do it quickly. Uh, but G-Wizard can do it for you. And so I've told G-Wizard my maximum cut, wi cut width is 0 0.02 inches it will estimate the tool engagement angle, that is how much of the tool is engaged in the cut for me. And then if you tell it to, to account for chip thinning here, what it will do is it will show you that you can increase your feed rate and will tell you your adjusted chip load to account for that chip thinning principle. And so I'm going to start out at uh, 12 inches per minute. Uh, G Wizard has also told me that my deflection is still a reasonable number at two tenths, and I'll, I'll go up from there. I may go 17, maybe even 23. Who knows? I'm not really interested in determining what the maximum material removal rate is. Uh, I just want a cut that doesn't rub, that uh, adequately uses the tool, gives me good tool life, and 
there's really no way that I could have done that without G-Wizard. How else am I going to figure out what my adjusted chip load is or the deflection of my tool based on the material of the tool? I mean, that's there's just there's no way that I could do that, and there's no way that I could be successful, in my opinion, uh, so quickly without G-Wizard. So now we'll go over to the machine, and we'll give G-Wizard suggestions a try. Well, we're not at the mill quite yet. I changed my mind. I decided for this uh, first profile cut, I was going to go with a three flute cutter. And so I adjusted G Wizard. It accounted for that, and it tells me I should start, uh, conservatively start at 9 inches per minute, move up to 17. I think I'm going to start at about 12 inches per minute, somewhere around there, and then uh, move that up a little bit at a time up to. You know, who knows, I may even get as high as 21 inches per minute and see how that goes. Even at 21, my uh, deflection is only 4 tenths, so that's not a big deal. Uh, I'll just get on there and uh, see how the machine handles it, and uh, we'll go from there. So here we go with uh, three flutes. This is 12 inches per minute. Fifteen inches per minute. Sixteen inches per minute. Seventeen inches per minute. Well, there went the end mill. I was going at 17 inches per minute. Everything looked and sounded great. Don't know what happened. So I think I found why the end mill didn't work. I've got this stub of that end mill in my uh, collet right now. And I'm indicating on it, and it's showing around three thousandths of an inch in runout. Uh, and, and that's just completely and totally unacceptable. So now I'm going to check some other collets and other end mills and see if I can track down where the problem lies. Alright, I'm ready to try again after breaking that three flute. I looked at the collet that I was using and discovered that it had some burrs and that was causing that uh, over three thousandths of an inch of run out. I removed those burrs and I got it down to about uh, 0.075, uh, that's 0.075 thousandths, so uh, less than a thousandth of run out now at the collet, and that's about as best as I can get it given the spindle that I've got, so I'm going to see how it goes. Now I've uh, swapped out to a Mari Tool 4 flute variable, uh, A-L-T-I-N end mill. Uh, look forward to seeing how these works. Everybody praises the variables. I've never used one, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Again, according to G-Wizard, I'm going to start out conservative and then move up. I'm going to start out about uh, 15 inches per minute and uh, see how that goes and move up. Here. Definitely quieter, smoother. To 17 inches per minute. That's plenty fast for me. I'll just keep it there. It's working smoothly. It sounds good. I had the program stop uh, middle of the profile, just I wanted to 
uh, check the tool and so I made this particular profile into five different sections and it just got the end of one of those sections and so uh, everything's looking good so far the tool is still sharp there's no uh, problems with any of the flutes or any of the edges there was a bit of chip welding going on but I think that's typical and it wasn't actually welded they were just kind of stuck to the flutes but those get pushed off during the next cut uh, overall the tool looks like it's in fairly good shape I put my finger to it as soon as it came out and it was a little warm but it wasn't hot in any way and so uh, I, I think 17 inches per minute may be conservative but it works and I'm not really in a hurry and so I don't think I'm going to push it past that. I'm within the manufacturer's rec recommended chip load. And so uh, I don't want to break any more tools if I don't have to. Everything seems to be working smoothly. Got a nice finish. I think I'm happy.